मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स इन कंटिन्यूशन विद चैप्टर शॉर्ट टर्म इक्लूबीरियम आउटपुट टूडे वी विल डिस्कस हाउ इक्लूबीरियम आउटपुट और इक्लूबीरियम जी डी पी इज डिटरमाइंड इन द इकोनॉमी विद द हेल्प ऑफ अ टेबल एंड डायग्राम सो फर्स्ट विल फोकस ऑन ए एस इक्वल्स टू ए डी वेयर ए इज एग्रीगेट सप्लाई एंड ए डी इज एग्रीगेट डिमांड नाउ आउट ऑफ टू पैरामीटर्स कीन्स अज्यूम्ड ए एस टू बी एस परफेक्टली इलास्टिक विच मीन्स दैट supply increases in proportionate to demand that is without causing any change in the general price level which means if demand increases by 10% then supply will also increase by 10% price remains unchanged now children this assumption made by keynes considering an economy where there was an unutilized capacity means production capacity in this economy remains unutilized maybe because of the lack of demand so this leads to a situation of depression in the economy so in such an economy when ad rises that is demand rises then it induces the in utilization of excess capacity that is as would rise without causing any increase in the price level and it will continue till excess capacity is fully utilized and economy reaches to a state of employment now under this according to keynes he treats ad to be as a principal determinant of equilibrium gdp whereas as to be as a passive that means according to keynes he relates the level of equilibrium gdp to the level of ad higher the ad higher would be the equilibrium gdp and vice versa now children let's understand the behavior of ad in terms of its components that is c and i Now, if you all can see a table, I've drawn a table for you all, which has a six. If you see, it has six uh, columns, and in the first one we have Y, which equals to A S, that is aggregate supply. Income leads to supply. That is, you know very well that as you supply, you get the income. C is consumption. Delta C is change in consumption. Delta Y is change in income. And I is investment expenditure, and A D is aggregate demand. well children over here if you see income increases from 0 to 120 and as i told you before also when income is zero still we have some consumption that is 20 if you see which is known as autonomous consumption because you know very well we did in the previous lesson that no matter if income is zero still we do the consumption by borrowing or some other ways now if we see the observation over here in the table first we'll talk about the behavior of c over here now if you all can see that i is constant at all level of income that is investment is constant it is 10 and it remains 10 at all level of income so our mpc comes to delta c upon delta y that comes to 10 upon 20 that is 0.5 now children there is always some minimum level of consumption as i told you which is known as c bar and which is 20 over here and if you want to see the figures of c we can use the algebraic equation of consumption function which we did in the previous chapter that is c equals to c bar plus by where c equals to c bar is 20 plus b is mpc 0.5 which we have taken out and if we see our initial y income is 0 and with that figure we come to the consumption which is 20 now children if you see the table you have seen that over here ad shows the combined behavior of c plus i that means it is showing the behavior of aggregate demand in two sector economy now we find of course you people know that y equals to ad so over here when the level of income is 60 if you see on the table 60 must be the equilibrium level of income because over here y equals to ad or as equals to ad you all can see i have marked it in the box 60 and 60 now before this if you see ad was greater than y it implies that the level of demand was higher than the available supply so producer must be suffering loss because of the unfulfilled demand and beyond this 60 if you see y was greater than ad now if we talk about the situation supplying exceeding the demand in the economy and the producer must be accumulating an undesired stock and he must be suffering the loss now children if we have to prove it algebraically if you see the algebraic 
equation goes like this you know very well that equilibrium is struck when y equals to ad where y equals to c plus i why y equals c plus i because we know that ad equals to c plus i this we have done when we are doing about the saving function now when y equals to c plus i where c is what c is a consumption function which leads to an equation of c bar plus by plus i so when we put the values over here y equals to c bar is how much children it is minimum is 20 plus our mpc is that is b is 0.5 y plus up your i is 10 so you know that your y is 0 so that comes to y minus 0.5 y that comes to 30 and 0.5 y equals to 30 that comes y equals to 30 upon 0.5 is 60 so thus we have proved over here that y equals to ad where y is 60 and ad which was c plus i is also 60 and equilibrium is stuck over here now if you see the diagram you will see that on the x axis we have taken the income and the y axis we have taken the expenditure that is c plus i or ad and you all can see a line forming an angle of 45 now this is a line of reference every point on this line shows that y equals to ad so on this line equilibrium can stuck anywhere where we can say y equals to ad now if you see over here i line starting from 10 is constant at all level of y this you know that i investment expenditure is constant it is 10 no matter what the level of income is if you see the c line is moving up for children it is showing a positive relationship between c and y that is between consumption and income as the income increases even the consumption is increases and the slope of c line shows the mpc and which we have already taken out 0.5 and the c function goes like c bar plus by now ad function is indicated by c plus i if you can see we have c plus i which shows the ad and which starts from 30 if you see that c plus i it starts from 30 the reason because it consists of c plus i and c is how much c is starting from 20 c in the diagram and i is starting from 10 so 20 plus 10 comes to 30 then your ad line is parallel to c line is it so ad line is parallel to c line because the difference between ad and c aggregate demand and consumption is equal to 10 which is constant at all level of income So children equilibrium is stuck where ad line crosses the line of reference at point e you all can see in the diagram point e thus this point e is the point of equilibrium where we say y equals to ad or y equals to ad which is 60 thank you good morning